Like almost every day, there are headlines about a new restaurant opening, a new business moving to town, Wawa doing something, all kinds of things happening in all parts of the area. Karen Mathis, the managing editor of The Daily Record, back here on The Morning Show. Let's start with the town center. I mean from, you know, 295 all the way to Gate Parkway along Town Center Drive, there is a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know the town center area, and just south of that, which is still the town center area, is where the Heinz Group is um, getting ready to build, develop on 105 acres. And that will be mixed use. They're starting with an apartment complex, lots of apartments going on. And the first phase is going to also include uh, office buildings. If uh, any tenant is interested in coming in and leasing most of an office building, they'll put that up too. So that's huge, and that's going to be kind of close to the IKEA that's going in. Yeah, which is going to be a tourist attraction of its own. Yes. Um, Mary Hill yes. has had its share of troubles, but there are a lot of people who want to say, you know, the area between Edgewood Avenue and the west side has a lot of potential. They do. And we can do things there. And there are a lot of companies that are starting to do things there. Um, we've had some people move in already. You've seen Maple Street uh, Biscuit Company opening, and a lot of them have been there. But we've seen several new restaurants going in. Um, the chef at um, 29 South in Fernandina Beach, he's going to be opening there. The um, Larry's Giant Subs will be opening, um, kind of a new prototype there that's going to be developed just for the, just for the area. We've got the Town Beer Company, which will sell Florida and local beers on draft and um, buy cans and bottles. And while it's uh, not going to happen immediately, the closed Edgewood Bakery will become the second French pantry in the city. Which is very popular. I mean, you got to stand in line at the uh, the other yes. the, the original French pantry. And if you're saying Edgewood Bakery, mm -hmm. that's the one that was a big to-do with Shad Khan yes. and the people who wanted to rehab yes. it and own it. Uh, let's talk about Regency. That area just can't seem to get a break. Uh, I, you know, you've got some national chains that are closing down. The national chains, we saw Outback leave already, and Sweet Tomatoes closed, and Carabas recently closed there. But you're also seeing some other companies uh, moving in. You've got a, a, a restaurant called the Juicy Crab that's going into the Sweet Tomato spot. And Aldi Discount Grocery Store is going into the former Bed Bath & Beyond space. So that's, that's a big move for that area. And Chipotle wants to build a new restaurant where the Pier 1 Imports is. That'll be torn down and Chipotle is going to build there. And then you have a, an outlet, the Skechers Outlet, will, uh, footwear is opening out there too. So you've got a lot of nationals leaving, but you've got some more coming in. So it's, and Regency Square Mall, it's the 50th anniversary for Regency this mm -hmm. week. If only they could find a good use for that. I know some things have been bandied about. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see where things ultimately yes. fall. Uh, downtown, I, I've always been a, a big believer in if you build it, they will come. Um, there are some things that are built and they just needed to be rehabbed, and that's in the process. It is, uh, and the Barnett, the old Barnett Bank building and the Marble Street Trio buildings right now are making the headlines. Uh, the Barnett Bank building was recently sold, so we know an investor is really interested in going in and redeveloping that, and the Marble Street Trio also will be redeveloped. There are lots of plans for that. The Downtown Investment Authority approved money for the deal. City Council is expected to pro approve money for the deal. The money won't go out until the projects are finished. Um, but it'll have a bank, office, retail space, apartments, hotel, everything. And, and the people who have businesses in and around there who feel like those businesses are beleaguered because of all the blight are saying, this is just the shot in the arm we need. And, and finally, we've got only a few seconds left. I've got to ask you, what's going to happen with CSX, the big picture here? Uh, the big picture is uh, the shareholders are going to vote. Uh, there's a big expectation that the shareholders like the direction that the um, incoming potential CEO, Hunter Harrison, will take the company. And once that happens, um, he'll come in and we'll see what happens next. In the meantime, CSX did announce that it will be cutting 1,000 management jobs this month. Headquarters stay here, do you think? Head well, for now, the headquarters are here. We'll see what happens later. There's no indication that they would move. Karen Mathis, thanks very much. Thank you. Hey, if you'd like to revisit this interview and find out about all the growth that's going on, we're going to post it on newsforjax.com along about 10, 30, 11 o'clock this morning. Just go to the Morning Show page and to the video section.